So friends, let's see this delicious brinjal and potato bhaji. Now I've taken these uh, long and dark purple brinjals. Just wash them really well and pat them dry. And I'm just going to cut off the tips and discard that. Next, I'm going to cut the brinjal lengthwise into two equal halves. And also keep a bowl of water ready. And then I'm going to cut each of these again into half lengthwise. And then I'm going to chop them up into small cubes like this. So we're going to keep the brinjal with the peel. You don't need to peel the brinjal for this recipe. Just cut them into even sized cubes. And then you're going to add all of this to the water. Now we're putting this into the water because we don't want to discolor the brinjals. Because you keep them out like that, they'll turn a little dark in color. Now here I've heated two tablespoons of oil and I've drained out all the water from the brinjals. Once the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to add the brinjal to the oil. And we're going to fry them really well for at least a whole minute till the brinjals soften a bit and darken a bit. Once that's done, we're going to take them out and put them into a bowl. To the remaining oil, I've taken one large potato that I've boiled, peeled and cubed. Again into small cubes. I'm going to add that and we're going to fry this potato for one whole minute as well. Once that is done, we're going to take the potatoes out and add them to the brinjals. And we can just set this aside. Now to the remaining oil, I'm going to add one light green chilli, two cloves of garlic and one half inch of ginger that I've chopped fine. We're going to fry this really well. Now if the oil is a little less, just add a little bit of oil. Now I've added one bay leaf. Fry the bay leaf well too. And then I'm going to add about 5 to 6 curry leaves. Saute them too. And then I'm going to add one medium onion that I've chopped fine. So fry all of these ingredients really well. We're going to add half a teaspoon of haldi powder or turmeric powder, one teaspoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder and half a teaspoon of garam masala. Fry all of this bagar really, really well. Now I'm going to add the fried potatoes and brinjals to this fodni or this bagar and we're going to give everything a very good mix. Next, I'm going to add half a cup of water and mix everything well again. Now we're going to add some salt to taste and I'm also going to add a teaspoon of grated jaggery. You can also add sugar in case of jaggery or you can or jaggery and you can also uh, you know increase the amount if you want it a little on the sweeter side. We're going to saute everything for one whole minute so that everything comes together really well. The bay leaf too adds a real nice flavor to this dish as well as all the lovely spices that we've added. Now I leave a link of how I make my garam masala at home in the description box below. And now we're going to cover and cook this for a whole 5 minutes on low flame stirring in intervals. And now after 5 minutes you can see that everything has come together really well and the potatoes and the brinjal have also cooked really nicely. So this is like a semi a dry dish. It's not a complete gravy as well as it's not completely dry. But it's just the perfect consistency. Now I'm going to add 1 fourth cup of fresh coriander leaves chopped fine. Again give everything a good mix. And at this point you can turn off the heat. And our lovely dish is all ready. You can also add a dash of lemon juice while serving if you like it a little on the tangy side. 
So you can enjoy this with some chaporis or chapatis or some rice and dal. It's really, really delicious. So I hope you give this recipe a try. And if you like it, then don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section below. Write to me about it. And I'll see you soon in my next video. This is Akshata signing off. Bye. So friends, let's start with today's peas and potato bhaji. Now here I have about 4 light green chilies, 10 cloves of garlic, an inch of ginger, a cup of green peas, 3 medium or 3 small potatoes and a 1 teaspoon each of pepper powder and cumin powder and some salt to taste. So I'm going to start by uh, making a coarse paste by adding the uh, green chilies, the ginger, the garlic, a little bit of salt, my pepper powder and my cumin powder and I'm going to grind all of this to a very coarse paste. Now transfer the paste to a separate bowl and we're going to use the masala water which is just the water that we're going to clean up the mixer with also. We're going to use that. So now I'm going to uh, peel the boiled potatoes and I'm going to chop them up uh, into small cubes. Now to boil my potatoes, I put them in my pressure cooker for one whistle on high with some water in it and then I've simmered it for about 5 to 10 minutes. Now I'm going to heat one tablespoon of oil in a pan. Once my oil is nice and hot, I'm going to add this coarsely ground paste. And I'm going to fry this paste really well for about 2-3 to three minutes till I get the lovely aroma of the fried paste. So this will give you a lovely aroma of some pepper, some cumin, the green chilies, the ginger and the garlic. Now I'm going to add just about 1-4 teaspoon of turmeric or haldi powder. Mix everything in well. And then I'm going to add the green peas. Now you can use fresh green peas or you can use in, uh, you know, the frozen peas, whatever is available. Mix everything well together. Now if you're using the frozen peas, you know, you need to thaw them or what you can do is just when they're frozen, just put them in a bowl of water and then drain the water after 2-3 minutes. Now I'm going to add the boiled potatoes, which I've made into cubes and I'm going to mix everything very gently. We don't want to break the potatoes. Now one trick I like to share with you here is that I always like to you know, when I, if I'm making this recipe, I always like to boil the potatoes the previous day and refrigerate them. That way they become nice and firm and, you know, uh, so yeah, it's very easy to chop and they don't become mushy, they don't disintegrate. So it's always good if you're planning to make any recipe with boiled potatoes to boil the potatoes the previous day and then, uh, you know, refrigerate them and then use them the next day. Now I'm going to add this masala water. And we are going to just mix everything nicely. Now this potato bhaji goes very well with some puris or even with some chapati or poi or even some rice and dal. It's an excellent side dish or as a main vegetable also. It tastes really very really different from the normal puri bhaji that we are used to having. Now I'm going to cover and cook this for about 2-3 to three minutes on a very low flame. And now we're going to season it with some salt to taste and a pinch of sugar. Now remember we already added salt when we were grinding the coarse paste. So we go, go a little bit easy on the salt or you can give it a taste and see whether you need to add any more salt. And again we're going to cook, a, cook a cover and cook this for another one or two minutes. Because we want everything to really, you know come together really well all the spices and now we're just going to mix everything gently you might find that the spice paste is stuck to the bottom a little bit just scrape it off and uh, that also adds an extra flavor to this dish you know a little bit of fried masala and it comes off very easily and that's it friends your lovely peas and potato bhaji is all ready to enjoy try out this recipe and let me know how you like it
So in this way, uh, I'm going to be chopping up the cauliflower. Now it's very important that you soak the cauliflower for, flour for at least half an hour in some water to which salt has been added. In that way, if there are any worms or any dirt in the cauliflower, it will, uh, you know, come out into the water and then you can rinse the cauliflower very nicely. So after that, I am going to chop it up into small florets. I'm going to take off the leaves and the stalk, but we're going to use the leaves in this recipe. So after chopping up the cauliflower into tiny florets like this by taking away uh, taking out the stalk you can keep a little paper bag at the side to uh, put all the stalks and whatever parts are not going to be used and you can keep a bowl to just put in the florets now if any part of the cauliflower is a little bit discolored uh, get rid of that part we're not going to use that and uh, after cutting up all the florets, we're just going to roughly tear up the leaves into tiny pieces and we're going to be using that too. part is the potato so I've just boiled these potatoes uh, in a pressure pan for one whistle on high and then simmered it for about five minutes and then once they've completely cooled down I'm just going to peel off the potatoes and then cut them into small cubes. Now I'm also going to be using two light green chilies these are the less spicy uh, chilies I'm just going to cut them up into fours then we also require some salt and some sugar. So let's begin making this very delicious and easy recipe. So here in a pan, I've added about two tablespoons of oil and I've heated up the oil. Once the oil is nice and hot on a low to medium flame, we're going to be adding about one fourth teaspoon of mustard seeds, also called mori or rye. Once these seeds begin to splutter, we're going to add about half a teaspoon of cumin or jeera seeds, followed by the chilies and also one fourth teaspoon of hing or asafoetida. So once the chilies get a little bit fried, we're going to add a one fourth teaspoon of turmeric powder or haldi powder. And then we're going to add the boiled and cubed potatoes. We're going to give it a little mix in this oil. And then we're just going to add the cauliflower florets along with the leaves. Now give everything a good mix. This vegetable really gets ready very quickly and it's really very simple and easy to make. So once you've given everything a good mix and you know everything has been coated well with all of the ingredients, we're going to cover it with a lid and we're going to pour some water on top of it. And then we're going to cook this on a very slow or low flame for about 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, and of course you have to keep uh, stirring in between by lifting up the lid carefully and stirring in between. You will just see that your florets, your cauliflower is completely cooked. And now we're just going to add some interesting spices to make it nice and delicious, starting with seasoning it with some salt and some sugar to taste. Then we're just going to flavor it with some cumin powder as well as coriander powder. So I'm going with about half a teaspoon of roasted homemade cumin or jeera powder. I have a recipe for these. I'll leave this in the description box below. Then we're just going to cover it and cook it for about a minute. And after that, again, we are going to stir it in between by this time, you'll notice that the water is almost uh, evaporated. So whatever is left, just add it to the gravy. I just add it to the vegetable rather. 
and then we're just going to add some coriander powder and then just about one four teaspoon of garam masala. I have a recipe for homemade garam masala. I leave it in the comments box below and the description box below. And then we're just going to cook it without any lid on a low to medium flame till the water starts drying up. And then we have this vegetable all ready. And now we're just going to serve it. And this goes very well with some chapati or pori. And then you can just garnish it with some coriander. This is really a very easy dish. It gets ready very quick. It's a good tiffin item as well as a lunch or dinner item. So I hope you like today's recipe. I hope you give it a try. And if you do like... Sir, now you can make this with sprouted moong or with plain, uh, you know, just uh, soaked moong. So watch the video till the end. I'll show you how to sprout the moong. So once the moong is sprouted, just put it into a pressure pan in a vessel like this. Don't add water to the vessel, only to the pan. And cook it for two whistles on high and then switch the cooker off. Once the cooker has cooled down to room temperature, your moong will look like this. So don't add any water into the moong. Now this is a paste which I have prepared and this is one boiled and cubed and peeled and cube potato so now for that paste uh, i took about six green chilies i'm using the light green chilies which are less spicy one inch of ginger this is about half a cup of grated fresh coconut and one cup of coriander and some salt to taste so i just added all of that to the mixer and made it into a nice paste like this so it shouldn't be very smooth or very coarse just of this consistency so that everything is mixed well together so now in my pan, I'm going to add one tablespoon of oil. Once the oil is nice and heated, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. That is mohori or rye. Once the mustard seeds begin to splutter, I'm going to add one fourth teaspoon of haldi powder or turmeric powder. Followed by half a teaspoon of asafoetida or hingo. Now we're going to add the ground paste to this bagar or to this forti. And we're going to fry the paste for a whole minute till the paste is it starts oozing out a little bit of oil. So just fry it on a low to medium flame, stirring it. Now this usar is really delicious and you can have this with uh, pori or with rice, chapatis, even with pao. It is amazing. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of coriander powder or dhania powder and half a teaspoon of cumin powder, jeera powder. So these are all homemade powders. If you want to see how I do the, uh, make the powders at home, I'll leave a link to my recipe uh, of how to make ground powders at home itself so that there are no preservatives or anything in it. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of goda masala. Again, this is a homemade uh, masala. I'll leave the link to that. And I'm going to add 1 4 teaspoon of garam masala. So even this recipe you'll find in the description box as well as the comment section. So now once all the masalas are really fried nicely, we're going to add the moong that we cooked. Remember we didn't add any water to the moong. We just added the water to the pressure cooker and cooked the moong for exactly two whistles. So like I said, you can either sprout the moong or you can leave them just soak the moong for about uh, two to three hours and then use it. Now, if you want to see how I sprouted the moong, please watch the video till the end. It's a very simple process. So now I'm going to add one cup of hot water and mix everything really well together. Now, if you want to have more of a dry dish, then only add this one half cup of water. But if you want a little more gravy, then you can add another half cup of hot water. So I'm keeping it semi uh, you know, dry in the sense not too much of a gravy. Now you can also taste it and just see if you need to add a little more salt because we added salt only to the ground paste. So you can add salt if you like. Now mix everything really well together. So now I'm going to add just about one teaspoon of joggery or ghoul. Now if you don't use joggery in your cooking, you can also add sugar. Just a little bit, maybe just a pinch of sugar. 
and now we're going to add this boiled peeled and cubed potatoes so what i do is i take the potatoes wash them well and put them in my pressure pan for one whistle on high with some water in it and then i simmer it for about five minutes put the pressure pan off and once it cools down i remove the potatoes let them cool down a little and then peel them and cube them and now we're just going to cover and cook this on a low flame for three minutes and you can see that our usar is all ready you can also squeeze some lime juice on top of this and it goes very well with pav bread slices pori or rice so do try out this recipe guys and let me know how you like it and for those of you who want to know how i sprout the moog you can watch the, uh, the remaining part of this video so what i do is i take about uh, one wati of moog i wash it very well under water and then i soak it in about 3 cups of water overnight or for 8 hours then i remove all the water and keep it aside again for another 8 hours and then you'll see that it sprouts so if you want more sprouts i mean you want to sprout more then just keep it for another half a day and you know you'll get
everyone and welcome to Akshita's Recipes. Well, today's recipe is my own invention and it's called Capsicum and Potato Masala. It is basically a twist on the Pau Bhaji Masala. You know, sometimes when we eat Pau Bhaji, we have a little bit of guilt feeling. Oh, we've eaten a lot of butter, we've eaten a lot of Pau. And so we want to make this into a more healthier version which we can have with some roti or pori. Now this is almost the same as pav bhaji. It has almost the same ingredients like some capsicum, onion, ginger garlic paste, boiled potato, a little bit of uh, pav bhaji masala. But it is made into a vegetable dish. Now this is also a dish, you know, when you're really tired and you don't really want to cook something, you just want to whip up something with whatever little bit of vegetables you have in your fridge, like you have some capsicum or you have some boiled potatoes there or some onions and you just want to get all of that together and make something really quick. It's even an ideal recipe for your office tiffin boxes to give your children in their tiffin boxes. It's something which you can just put together very, very fast with, a, with very, very few ingredients. So, let me show you how I prepare this simple capsicum and potato masala dish. And if you like this recipe, then don't forget to give it a lovely thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button you see below this video. It doesn't have any fee or any charge. It's absolutely free. Go and check out all my recipes. I have about 185 recipes right now and vlogs on my channel. So you can go to Akshita's recipes and check out all my videos. So let's just head on to my kitchen and make this very simple vegetable called capsicum and potato.